first part yesterday was totally Zeb. He's all about building. I'm all about finish work. So watch with us as we show you how to do a layered chippy finish on the bottom and a stain aged top. To start off with the base, we're gonna be using DIY paint and layered chocolate because I want a dark wood undertone when we distress and when it chips down. And then I'm gonna be using the Dusty and the Little Frenchie. The Dusty is gonna really get that paint on all the flat surfaces and the Little Frenchie will get down into all the details. You could also spray this and that would make quick work of it. I decided to brush this because I wanted to have an old world look and not a clean sprayed look. So I want texture and brush strokes so that way it looks like it was painted multiple times. This dark is gonna give us a great base to start with and we'll get rid of the light wood tones when we're distressing and making it chippy. I'm not super worried about the base coat being perfect. We are gonna layer at least two more colors on top of here, so perfection isn't needed. I just want pretty even coverage so that way when I distress back, I'm not seeing the light color underneath. All right, we got the base coat of layered chocolate on. It's nice and dark, that's what we want. We're gonna be sealing the layered chocolate in with some spray lacquer. This is going to give us some resist as well so that when we put the other layers of paint on, it won't distress down to this color. We'll have a nice dark undercoat. So we have cake batter. And we have apothecary. Naturally, we're going with this. Yeah, apothecary is my go-to. Cake batter is like a yummy, soft yellow. So we're gonna paint simultaneously and be random. I'm gonna be going next to what Jamie's painting. We don't wanna do like a ton of blending. We just want random paint on here. And I'm getting a little bit of the cake batter in my brush, because I'm going after Jamie, but it's not a big deal. I know, I know, you're at home right now, screaming at your TV or your phone, watching YouTube and yelling at us to stop, don't do it. Don't ruin that table. Just you wait, it's about to get real good. Going on with another coat of lacquer over the top of this, I'm not even worrying about the paint being dry. Some of it's starting to get a little dry, some of it's still really wet. It's not gonna matter. Worst thing that'll happen is it'll crackle and cause some chipping, which is exactly what we want. We've got Sweet Pickens Milk Paint and Flower Sack. I mixed it up a little bit thick because I want it to crackle. And we're gonna go ahead, while the lacquer is still tacky, we're gonna paint this on here. And we're just gonna do one coat. I'm not worried about full coverage because we're gonna distress it back. And we're hopefully gonna get a fun, chippy, crackled effect. Zeb's gonna come back through here with the heat gun and really cause it to crack and chip some more. And we, we may even wet distress it. You know how old trim in a house has like eight coats of paint on it? That's what we're going for. Yeah. With four coats. <laughs> <laughs> with, without 20 years of wear and tear. So while that base is drying a little bit, I watered down my leftover uh, milk paint. I don't actually know the ratio, but it's pretty watery. Probably like four parts water to one part milk paint. I'm just gonna come on here and randomly brush some milk paint on before we put on the milk stain. When we blend in the real stain, I wanted to have some white underneath it, so that way we get a real aged barn wood effect. And it kind of ties the top to the bottom. So I'm putting this on here totally randomly, my best guess is about four parts water to one part milk paint. Just whatever you have left over in the bottom of your jar. And now I'm just gonna take my brush and go back and forth and then kind of drag out some of these strokes so it's not so obvious. So the milk paint would probably crackle and chip and do everything it's supposed to do all on its own. We're gonna force the issue a little bit. I've just got a heat gun here. I'm gonna put it on the high setting. I'm gonna move it over the paint fairly quickly because I want it to crack and chip, but I don't wanna burn the paint. You gotta be careful of that. This is not necessarily a recommended method, so do it at your own risk. So I'm gonna be using real stain number two. We're gonna put a couple of coats on here to get it pretty dark. I'm gonna just kind of mix this milk paint really good with the real stain number two. And we're gonna put two coats on here and then we'll be almost finished. This is a reactive stain. It changes color, gets darker the longer it sits. And every type of wood will react a little bit differently. This is pine, so you're gonna probably get the least reaction and color depth from pine.
We've got this amazing crackle in here that Zeb achieved with the heat gun. So now I'm just taking a damp rag and I'm just gonna wet distress and kind of bring back some of the original paint and colors that we had underneath. I'm gonna do that all over and it's gonna have the look of like aged salvage chippy wood. When you wet distress, it may reactivate the milk paint and get you more chippy too. So just be prepared for that happening when you're doing this technique. So if you're worried about too much chippy, just use 220 sandpaper and that's gonna give you a distress without causing any more chippiness with the water. I'm going on with DIY clear wax and I'm gonna just give it a liberal coat. We decided to go wax on the bottom and then we're gonna seal it with Sweet Pickens top coat on the top. The wax is gonna keep kind of this soft aged look without getting it too shiny. It'll be a nice matte finish and the Sweet Pickens top coat will be really durable on the top of this. We're gonna do five coats of the top coat and two coats of wax. The Sweet Pickens top coat is going on and I've got a three inch Wooster Foam King brush. We love these for putting top coat on. I'm gonna get a bunch on and then I'll do nice long strokes and even everything out. One of the reasons I chose to brush this on instead of spray it with the sprayer is I need it to be really nice and thick. I've got some cracks and divots I want it to fill in. So I'm hoping doing several coats on here, five in total, that those fill up real nice. And these knot holes where I've got a couple little holes that I didn't fill with filler, fill up with sealer and no issues. To do my final pass on here, I'm gonna run real light so I don't get any bubbles or anything. I'm just gonna drag this along right like that. It doesn't take a whole lot and I'll get nice even strokes and pretty much no brush strokes doing it like this. I'm gonna drag it nice and straight down the entire length of the table and repeat that process on every coat. The finish is complete. I'm kind of obsessed with the way it turned out. It may be the single coolest table we've ever built. I am gonna have to talk her out of building another table for our house. Our table is really cool, but this one turned out great. We might just repaint the bottom of ours to look like this. I love the way that the layers play together and we like, we're super messy and we were kind of in a rush because I've got to be somewhere today. And I actually think that made it look better because we didn't have time to worry about it. I think sometimes people spend too much time worrying about how it's gonna turn out and is it perfect? But when you're trying to make something look authentically old, you're going to have layers and textures and drips and bumps. Anytime I've ever seen old salvage, it always has a drip or two in it. So this is gonna be a work table. We did five coats of Sweet Pickens top coat on there. We want it to be super durable. It's gonna have plants and dirt and potting soil and paint on the top. It needs to be able to be wiped off. And the bottom has two coats of DIY clear wax on it. Using the wax is gonna help that base naturally wear over time, which will make it even more beautiful. We started off with our Oliver Corbels. To create this look, you're gonna need two pairs of unfinished Oliver Corbels. And then on the bottom, we started out with layered chocolate. Then we added cake batter, apothecary, flour sack. Then we used leftover watered down flour sack on top and real stain number two, sealed it with Sweet Pickens top coat on the top and clear wax on the bottom. We also used a spray can of lacquer that we don't sell on our website, but I'll have Zeb drop a link for that below. Be sure to go to jamierayvintage.com for all these products and for everything you need for your DIY. The cool thing about it is we used a lot of products, but we didn't even use a sample of most. I would say you need at least two samples of the flower sack, and remember when you're painting, the full coverage is not necessary. That way you're not overusing paint and wasting paint that you're gonna be taking off in the end. Be sure to share this video with any of your friends that love chippy, authentic, aged finishes and a curated look. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY.
hit the subscribe button.